we're really very excited to have what I call Nellie's new harpsichord at Mount Vernon. We've had installed in the new room, which is the grand room, the first room that people enter when they come into the mansion. And most of the time, people are just seeing it, and it's really a beautiful instrument. For Sundays in July and August, we've had a very special treat in the afternoons for people when they've been able to experience it actually playing. Um, and so I think that's been just a really special moment. It was a fantastic moment. The day we finally put the harpsichord down on the stand in my workshop, for the first time I was seeing the instrument with the proportions it was supposed to have from the right angle. Until then, the stand had been separate, the case had been separate, the lid separate, and uh, when it all came together and sat down on the floor for the first time, that was a great moment. The completed instrument showed up at Mount Vernon on January 2nd. And that was the day I started my library fellowship here. So I greeted it at the door, basically watched it get unwrapped, got, watched it get set up, and really had a chance to live with it for one solid month, getting to know it. It was just a rare privilege to be able to play this instrument right after it was built, get to know it, get to know what it can do musically, and also then, of course, imagine what it must have been like in the Washington's parlor and hearing Nellie play it. I think sound just um, enriches, diversifies the experience at being a, at a historic site like this. But to have the harpsichord playing, to think these are the kinds of sounds that George Washington heard, that his guests heard, it, it really sets the imagination afire. And it, it helps you imaginatively, figuratively step back into another world. And, and that's just incomparable. When I had my fellowship here, I had the privilege of going into the vault and looking at Nellie's exact music books. And in those books, she has put a lot of fingering. So I was able to see not only what she was doing in her studies and how she was playing these pieces, and also learn from her, from her fingering and try them out. Also, we could see which pieces were her favorites which ones had the most markings, maybe which ones her teacher had assigned to her. We're pretty lucky that she was a marker. Not everybody marks their music, and she really did. And so it's, it's almost like getting to know her by looking at her music books. I feel like I know a little bit about her. One of the interesting and exciting moments in the whole process was figuring out what the original leather plectra, the little things that pluck the strings, what they sounded like. We have these leather plectra, and that allows my fingers to be very sensitive on the keys. Um, a little bit different from the other harpsichords that I've had a chance to play, which are mostly um, quilled in bird quill. As soon as I had one set of jacks sounding, I told Joyce Lindorf, and she drove right down from Philadelphia to try it out. And it was okay, it was viable. Uh, but she brought some other kind of leather that I didn't have, and I was a little skeptical at first, but I tried it out. And it had a combination of characteristics that none of my leathers had, and it actually worked spectacularly well. After voicing this new leather, it actually physically looked, the plectra, physically looked like the ones in the old harpsichord. So it really gave me a sense that we were on the right track. This instrument has a lot to teach us about what was going on with keyboard music making at the end of the 18th century. We tend to think in black and white that there was a harpsichord era and a piano era, but actually it was so much more pluralistic than that because at the end of the 18th century we had this amazingly um, ornate 
and elaborate harpsichord at the same time that pianos were becoming very popular in homes. We know what 250-year-old harpsichords sound like. We don't know what they sounded like when they were new. We don't necessarily know for sure that this one sounded like the one here at Mount Vernon did in the period. We've done a lot of research, we've done a lot of experimentation, we've examined the original instrument and the clues there. We've done the best we could, and my hope is that if the original maker of this harpsichord would come back from 1793, he wouldn't be surprised at anything. It would seem about right. I'm so grateful to John Watson for all his work because through his knowledge and his scholarship and his skill, he has managed to bring the sound of an instrument that was just waiting to be reproduced. He has actually been able to create the real thing and now we can hear it. Nellie's original harpsichord, which the Washingtons acquired in 1793, was the very first original artifact to come back to Mount Vernon in 1859. But it has been silent ever since. So to have now the playable reproduction that can make it come alive and it's silent no more, we hope this will be a launching pad to continuing to explore music at Mount Vernon in the Washington's lives in the 18th century and connecting to today.